Hey everyone, welcome to the next episode of Partnerships in SaaS. Today with me, I have a super special guest. Uh, Blake and I actually just met, believe it or not, about 10 minutes ago, but I can already tell this guy is just full of knowledge. Uh, he's brilliant, got a lot of good thoughts on the partnership space and ecosystem as a whole. So uh, Blake, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thanks, to be, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Yeah. So we, you know, one of the things that I like to do when we kick off any conversation, right, is um, obviously I look back through some of the things you shared in your your kind of onboarding form, right? And your answer to what does partnerships mean to you really stood out to me. So I want to read it out loud and then we kind of jump off from there. Yeah. Um, you said it's the single most impactful way to offset the friction being felt in outbound and inbound today, right? And this idea that it can be efficient, predictable, scalable, but in most instances, it's not the way it's set up today in a B2B SaaS team. So let's kick off with that because I, I, there's, a, there's a thing that's been sort of kicked around the partnership space more often than not lately, which is this idea that partnerships is not singular, that it touches sort of mm -hmm. everything. So I want to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, I think there's uh, there's something systemic happening um, and I'm kind of I'm writing a white paper on it right now and it's titled It's Not Your Ecosystem. Right. And so there's a narcissistic point of view when we think about customer centricity, uh, when we're creating our partnership programs and we're going to market and it's all about us, how are we, 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 how are we going to go to market? How are we going to do inbound and PLG? Uh, it's really about accessing the customer's ecosystem. And so insofar as you're thinking about what you're going to do to add value to their ecosystem and how they're operating and how they think about their workflows that they're managing, you'll have better demand gen success, not only in your direct go-to-market, but definitely in the partnerships that you end up choosing to go to market with. And so what I mean when I say that um, we know that buyers um, are re outright rejecting sales processes that don't treat them like a person, right? So the humanization of things, and this goes back to regular business stuff. Don't be an asshole, right? If we can say that here. And we can uh, definitely say it. It's true too, it, don't be an asshole. if you are, <laughs> we're, we're opting out of that process. We don't care if you're a CEO, right? Or you're a partner or whatever it is, the job's not even worth that much anymore, right? And at the, at the end of the day, some po portions of the population are saying that, but we're all in B2B and we're kind of putting each other through these processes that we know we don't like, right? Um, and we have to buy from each other, which is insane to me. It baffles me. Um, so there's a bunch of that happening. It's clogging up. Outbound is much less uh, effective than it used to be. Um, inbound is still, you know, it definitely it was birthed here at HubSpot and it's still effective, but it's not as effective as it used to be because we can't see all of the different touch points that are happening. Twin Gartner says it takes 29 touch points. So what are we going to do to offset that? Well, we have two options. Um, if we think about being able to optimize, we've already tried to optimize inbound as much as you could probably be at the top of that curve. Same thing with outbound. We're, we're training and enabled out the yin yang, right? So what else can we do that will give us a step shift in our performance? That's not, that doesn't have a debt, you know, that diminishing return. And I think of it very plainly, like we can either take a bunch of people who don't know about us or give a shit about who we are and try to walk them all the way down the road to trying to break, break cash with us, right? Spend some money and trust us and maybe even do some personal and professional risk, depending on the level of the uh, annual order value, or we can acknowledge exactly how most startups grow when people pick up a phone, they call their friends, they call their relationships and hey, say, hey, I just need you to put me in front of this so I can borrow your trust, right? And so when I think about how partnerships accelerate, a very, very tactical way that partnerships accelerate your direct go-to-market is that if you've got a bucket of SDRs out there, they can have 12 months of beating the same value proposition and trying to figure out how to enter into that small piece of the workflow that that VP is managing. Or you can invest in 12 partnerships or 11 partnerships, right, that sit to the left and right of what you do and productize those better together stories and then feed that back over to your SDRs. Now they've got something brand new to say every single month. So every four weeks, your five-step outbound cadence, five touch points, you're reaching out with something new new use cases, new customer testimonials, new points of view. And you're constantly signaling that, hey, Barrett, look, even if I haven't touched on your point yet or your problem yet, I'm going to get there and I'm not going to stop trying, right? And eventually you might just give up and say, hey, look, like you're, you're doing a great job. Thanks for the persistency, uh, but here's where I'm actually focused. So if you have anything here, let's talk, right? And that's a better outbound experience, I think, for the buyer. It's a better experience as an SDR, right? Because you can only bang that cowbell so many times. 
Uh, but well, yeah, you're talking about, it's no, it's the next level. Now you're talking about, it's not inbound. It's not outbound. It's like the sort of evolution of those two concepts and how they marry together. You talked about, which I love, and I want to highlight this idea of um, borrowing trust, borrowing sort of the belief that this other third party, if you will, has already been there, done that, and perhaps contributes to your customer, right? And when I talk to folks, you know, at, at HubSpot, other companies I engage with across the industry and partnerships, everyone talks about, it's like one of two things. It's either these partners are going to help us to generate more leads, right. or these partners are going to help us to service more customers. Right. And But there's this little thing starting to happen, which is what I want to talk about with you because you just highlighted it. It's this idea of like, let's borrow a little bit of that intrinsic value, that trust, the fundamental you know, insights perhaps in terms of expertise, but I think more than anything, thought leadership and the right. value that you get by working with a like company that yes. already talks to your customer, your customer's already perhaps bought from or, or engaged with in some capacity. Right. And then not only does it differentiate the SDR, you know, messaging like you're describing, which I think is fundamental to breaking out in whatever vertical you're in, whatever part of the industry, but the secondary conversation around has it help bolster your own market position and give right. you more reach, right? So one of the things that you... Um, I should be clear. So uh, Blake is obviously CEO of Amp Factor. You guys do a ton of work in helping revenue teams monetize partnerships and whatnot. So I'm curious, like in your own research, your own conversations with customers and whatnot, what are you hearing around that trend? You know, the idea of connecting with like companies, not just to generate leads or service customers or even build integrations, but borrow that little bit of uh, market capital, that human capital, the trust factor you're describing. How right. are you seeing that play out? Yeah, I mean... Um... It's weird. Um, I feel like MDF is kind of like a red herring kind of thing, um, kind of like an MQL, right? Where um, I feel like I could tell a CEO, look, if you don't know the statistics around your lead to opportunity or opportunity to close one and the volume and the velocity and things like that, you have no business grading anybody on MQLs because it's almost irrelevant. It only matters if it's in context, right? If you can understand how to move that MQL from wherever they are, not just MQL to SDR bucket, right? Uh, so to answer your question, um, I don't think there's a ton of organizations that are thinking about the difference between progress and success and that earning trust and being able to borrow trust. I kind of formulate that into a demand gen multiplier, right? And when I think about my client and a potential partnership, I'll go look at SEM Rush and I'll look at the on-brand traffic that they have going to their website. So I can say, look, I don't care what their f philosophical position is. They are able to get people to come back and punch their name into Google, which is a massive intent engine, and then end up back on their website. And they, I can see that grow. So that's a signal to me that they, they at least get it. Um, increased reach, right? So being able to line that up, right? And now if we add in account mapping, right, if we use reveal or crossbeam or something like that, that's the real gold in them hills um, and the real opportunity. So if you can frame that kind of conversation, that leadership team needs to understand that um, you're, you are borrowing trust over the long term. It's no different than ABM, though. You have to have a mindset of abundance, not out of despair, not out of we got to sell, sell, sell today. Yes, we have to sell today. But you can't let your long-term strategies be dictated by the needs of today, um, for sure. Um, you'll find yourself out of business really quick. So I, I don't see them talking about it. They may talk about it, but they're not going to stroke checks on creating trust. trust right? <laughs> yeah, it's the actionable piece. No, I, and that's a good call out too, because like I think you're hearing to your point. Like folks are talking about we have to do something different. And and like I, the elephant in the room being the pandemic, the shift to work you know from home remote culture. Like I understand there's a bunch of macro and micro things happening across the industry, industries, I should pluralize that and just say like, it's happening everywhere. But right. I think the answer isn't to your point, do more. I think it's be more intentional, right? right? And so like that ideology there shifts. Good. Absolutely. 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 I mean, they say like with SEO, the best time to start SEO is three years ago, right? Well, you already have potential partners that are high quality partners that did start demand gen, the right sustainable way to build that book of trust three years ago, and you can borrow that, right? As long as you come to the table with the right intention, and at least in, in my mind, you have to, you should come with the right intention to give and to want to add value and that kind of thing. And that's the best way to create a partnership is to drop off value first, right? I love um, that I highlight. It, drop it off first. That, like that's worth saying out loud again, drop off value first and it. borrow. You said borrow too. You didn't that's say it. ride along with piggyback, take, use. You said right. borrow right. the 
you know, the market capital, the, the trust capital that they've developed over time. So right. you're almost like you're time traveling. What you're telling me is you've figured out how to time travel into <laughs> partner history and you're just nailing yeah, it. Right. <laughs> Seriously. That's, that's it. And I, you know, um, we talked about this before we hit play, but my podcast is called earn it, but it's called earn it because that stuff is due every single day and data decays, relationships decay and trust decay, demand decays, your ability to capitalize on it decays. You have to come out here and earn it, which means that you constantly have to be invested in that in creating that partnership. If you want partnerships to offset your direct go to market so that you start having better capacity, uh, you know, turnover on your, on your SDRs, you absolutely need to be invested in recognizing how you're helping your partners and not be all about yourself, how you're helping your partners help your customers um, or even connecting partners. One guy asked a question on, on LinkedIn or in a Slack channel. Um, hey, we're not great at creating demand gen today. How, and I have a partner who's willing to come to the table, but I don't have much to offer. And I'm like, hey, well, you know, go look across the rest of your partner groups. Maybe they have stuff that you can borrow again, right? And say, hey, partner one, come meet partner two. And I'll just be the connector for a while. 